Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. I wanted to tackle uh, the adrenal axis today and also talk about Cushing syndrome and help you get to grips with how it works and what the causes are. So let's get straight into it. Here's a side view of the middle of the brain. This is the front, this is the back. Right in the middle is this uh, area called the hypothalamus and underneath it on a stalk sits the pituitary gland. Okay, so moving on from there, this is a zoomed in area of what we just looked at. So here you can see the hypothalamus and here you can see the pituitary. What we want to look at mostly for this video is the anterior pituitary gland. So that's there. Also underneath I've drawn a kidney and on top of the kidney sits this thing here, this, this beige area here which is the adrenal gland. Okay. So let's add in some hormones and a key to understand it. And I'm going to talk about the positive effects of these hormones now. So the hypothalamus produces this hormone called corticotrophin releasing hormone, or CRH for short. This hormone, CRH, targets the anterior pituitary where it stimulates the release of adrenocorticotrophic hormone, or ACTH. And this ACTH targets the adrenal gland where it produces or uh, where it stimulates the production of a hormone called cortisol okay and this this cortisol goes on to affect the rest of the body to have various different effects it's essential that we have cortisol at all times um, and it fluctuates throughout the day to regulate our uh, circadian rhythms but it's important in, in inhibiting the immune system inhibiting bone formation raising blood glucose, inhibiting, uh, sorry, increasing metabolism, and increasing alertness. So, and it plays a key role in uh, a stress response to any sort of uh, stressful situation. Okay, now another key thing that we need to go through is the negative feedback. And what this means is that when there's cortisol flowing through the bloodstream, the cortisol itself targets the anterior pituitary and says, look, let's just settle down the production of ACTH. There's enough cort cortisol going around, stop producing ACTH and we'll drop that cortisol a little bit. It also targets the hypothalamus and tells it to do the same thing but regarding CRH. Okay, so now we've covered those things. Let's have a, a quick closer look at Cushing's syndrome. So Cushing's syndrome simply refers to the clinical features of having excessive cortisol in your system. So what are these sort of features? Well the best way to do it is to look at what the hormones themselves actually do. So you've got uh, cortisol it inhibits the immune system, so excessive cortisol is going to lead to a reduction in the immune system and make them more prone to infections. It inhibits bone formation, which means that people with a Cushing syndrome will end up with osteoporosis and very weak, brittle bones. It raises blood sugar, so people with excessive cortisol will, will end up with a type 2 diabetes, and it, it has an effect on metabolism. So these people with cortisol end up with uh, having this clinical picture of central obesity with abdominal striae, a round face, thin arms, uh, proximal muscle weakness, uh, you know, fatigue, shortness of breath, all of that sort of stuff. Okay. So now let's look at the causes of a cort of a Cushing's syndrome. Now the most common cause is when we as doctors give plenty of steroids to patients in, in the form of exogenous steroids. So this might be prednisolone, dexamethasone uh, and any other sort of exogenous steroid. Now this won't happen if you give them one or two doses but over a long period of time giving steroids for things like severe asthma uh, autoimmune conditions or inflammatory conditions can lead to a Cushingoid uh, or Cushing's syndrome. 
Now the next cause, not to be uh, confused with Cushing's syndrome, is Cushing's disease. This is where you have a pituitary adenoma, a little tumour within the pituitary gland, that's producing excessive amounts of ACTH, which then stimulates the adrenal gland to produce excessive amounts of cortisol. Okay. The next cause is adrenal Cushing's. This is where the adrenal gland has a little tumour or adenoma that itself just produces excessive cortisol without any influence from other hormones. And the final one you need to be aware of in the big four is a paraneoplastic Cushing's. This is where you have a, uh, a malignancy or a cancer and you get a disease that occurs para alongside the cancer and how this works is you have a cancer that produces excessive amounts of ectopic ACTH most commonly from a small cell lung cancer um, and that excessive ACTH stimulates the adrenal gland to produce excessive amounts of cortisol so let's look at how this works in relation to this diagram okay so the first one is where you have exogenous steroids that come from the outside and just produce all of these effects within the body. So that's the first cause and steroids got nothing to do with all of these. Okay. The next cause is where you have this little tumour of the anterior pituitary gland, pituitary adenoma and this itself produces excessive amounts of ACTH which stimulates the adrenal gland to produce excessive amounts of cortisol and leads to all of these effects. Okay, so that's uh, Cushing's disease. The next cause that we talked about is where you have a adrenal adenoma and this adrenal adenoma itself just directly causes excessive amounts or produces excessive amounts of cortisol leading to these conditions. Okay, And then the final cause is where you have uh, a cancer somewhere else in the body. There's a little diagram of the lungs. There's your small cell lung cancer that's producing excessive amounts of ACTH. And that excessive ACTH stimulates the adrenal gland to produce excessive amounts of cortisol, which then have all of these effects. So there we have it. I've been through the big four causes of Cushing syndrome. If you like this video, like it, subscribe to the YouTube channel, visit the website at zerotofinals.com, and make sure you check in for the next video where I'll be describing the dexamethasone suppression test that will help you to distinguish between all of these four causes of Cushing syndrome. Okay, so until next time, take care. See you later, Tom.